Hey everyone, and welcome back to Eastern Apali. A little disclaimer at the very beginning of this episode. This is a footage from the Tuesdays, or actually it was Tuesday, um, live stream. So if you've seen that one, this is only the same stuff again, but with a little bit more of explanation from my side. If you haven't seen that one, this is a shorter version for you to look at. But now enjoy today's episode. Sit back, relax, and see you in a second. Alrighty, so here we go. Um, I have already cut out a little bit at the beginning of this episode, um, but uh, we start off with doing some major important work on the beach side of the lock flume, which is mainly down to the fact that I, um, yeah, I was asking you in the last couple of episodes what you guys think would be the best to do uh, in order to save this area from major flooding and stuff and yeah you guys came up with a lot of great ideas the, the problem with most of the ideas was that i wasn't really sure if this does suit the area and isanapali itself but then then again i think there is not much room for interpretation so to say what could be a really valid and hyper realistic uh let's say security for this area and the thing we ended up with is a retaining wall over here which is also the one thing that has been suggested the most in the comments which i'm pretty thankful for um and and this retaining wall is is somewhat of a combination of a nature one and also with some concrete as little guidance you will see in a second how this will turn out eventually I have to say I'm pretty happy uh, with how it turned out to look. Uh, it also made sure that we have a little bit more of, I don't know, a little bit more of a nature border here in terms of uh, how this area is separated from the rest of it. Um, and we can also build this little pier over here. Again, this is purely taking your ideas into consideration and actually turning them into effect, I have to say, because you guys were pretty much hinting at um, me to, to change that according to your ideas. I also um, turned the wheel around as some of you have suggested um, that it now looks to the inside of the island. I think it's also pretty better, uh, pretty much better this way because it uh, faces then this wonderful area which still isn't done obviously but um, it, it will be a nice area to look at I should say. Mm. You can see I have also uh, started then to increase the beach itself because I felt like with our changes over here the beach yeah it just seemed to be a little bit too tiny um, if if at all it really didn't work out the way I wanted it in the first glance so I decided to make it a bit more um, wide a bit longer that's what she said for you alia I guess, you know you know you have to be in our streams to understand that but uh, if you haven't understood this yet there is a little bit of a running gag going on in our videos with the uh, hashtag twss which is that's what she said uh, if you don't know what this is about let me just quickly explain that because people have uh, they, they reached out to me if um I, I wouldn't think that this is too sexist or whatever. I just want to quickly clarify. So for, for once, this channel is um, also looking at the main target audience. I'm not willing to change, to, to make myself like a 150% family friendly, whatever. I think considering what's going on in the internet, this is still a very friendly and lovely place to be over here. And I keep everything to a minimum. But this little joke over here, I think it's nothing bad going on here. In fact, it has been it has been installed by a woman itself. So uh, she herself has kind of started this whole thing. Um, and I think this is the reason why it isn't sexist at all. But since a few people reach, actually not a few, quite a few people, like a lot of people reach out to me talking about this topic. And so I just wanted to quickly address that. However, again, as I said, Alia is the one um, who's, who's always uh, helping me out uh, with um, hashtags in the uh, wonderful live streams we have. And so this is whenever I have time and whenever I remember, I give this little notch to her in the episodes. And uh, yeah, I don't want to explain the, the joke. If you don't know the joke, it's pretty easy to Google it. Um, but if you don't know it yet, you will potentially know that in the future. Just to quickly mention that because I, I forgot to talk about that recently. However, um, now there was a little bit of a problem going on. As you can see, I'm building um, a weird structure over here, which is not that weird if we go into detail, um, but I needed to, to kind of, you know, make a little trick work to make sure that I can um, move the whole thing because the gizmo, again, wasn't really working in my favor. And uh, this is why I needed to, yeah, kind of 
work around as always pretty much um, but it worked eventually so I'm quite happy so what I wanted to do is you quite often see that with uh, retaining walls that they do have this kind of um, it's more or less like a bee beehive beehive um, structure like these octagons um, or is it this is it an octagon from in terms of shape not entirely sure but you have this opening which is working together like the um, structure in the beehive um, which gives you the max maximum uh, structural strength to it because this geometrical form helps to increase the stability of the entire structure so you kind of see this pretty often um, that these retaining walls not only have the obviously they have the task to maintain the water in there and kind of raise the overall height of the area so that the water isn't going to flood in but the second effect is obviously that they are strong enough for bigger waves and uh, to withstand the forces that water can um, yeah kind of bring in here so this is why I chose also to have this one obviously um, I wanted to make it also look a bit overgrown because um, it's it's a nice place it, it, we, we don't consider it to be flooded every now and then so maybe a few times in a decade but that's about it and not like every year so the reason I went then for so much foliage is basically um, that I'm hoping there wasn't a major flooding in the last couple of years and that's why we have a lot of uh, foliage going on. As people also did um, yeah, explain to me, which is totally totally understandable and I don't really know why I haven't I haven't seen that in the beginning um, the trees must be growing down uh, on the downside of this uh, yeah, retaining wall and they can't really grow on top of it because even if they would grow on top of it we would make sure with the park management uh, and the staff uh, people that we would kill those plants because they will definitely destroy the concrete structure below and this is why we absolutely don't want to have any trees growing on top of the retaining wall and that's why I changed the positioning of our um, trees here and there. Anyways, we are in the second part of today's live stream. Uh, sorry, that was my bad uh, of today's episode. Um, now we are tackling the actual log flume a little bit. And let me say, it would be lovely if I could have integrated that all in the time lapse. But for a good reason, you guys complained in the past quite often that my time lapse footage was sped up too much and it was dizzling to follow. And this is why I'm always wanting to improve this for you. I feel like we have found a nice sweet spot of everything between five and eight times I feel is okay. It's always a little bit dependent on how good my overall process was. And to be completely honest, in this live stream we had on uh, Tuesday, my process was insanely fast, even considering it was a live stream. I don't know why, I was just in such a good flow. This is why I couldn't really speed it up by eight times this time. It, I, I tested it, it just didn't work. It was too quick. I couldn't even do a really enjoyable um, commentary about it uh, for it I, I just started and after like being two minutes in I was like no that's not gonna work because I you know I don't want to make it appear as if I would be only reusing already shown footage it's I don't know it, it's a bit hard harder topic here I I do this quite often taking my live streams from from twitch and bring them to YouTube and nobody ever complained but I feel like since this is a pretty much different target group. I mean, yes, the core people are both, but most of the people here on YouTube watching and following Easter and Hali, um, as a series don't really watch my live streams on Twitch. So it's always new to them, but this time it's already as a video on demand here on YouTube. However, it doesn't have really that many views um, that I could believe everyone has seen this already. So I think, especially for those people who enjoy watching Easter Napali as the series as it appears is, um, like me having time lapses with my commentary explaining what I'm doing, it's way more comfortable to have it now as a form factor of the normal kind of ish episode. And this is why I think it's more or less like a, a really good service for you rather than just abusing my already existing footage. I mean, at the end of the day, I only have a limited uh, time uh, where I can play the game and I want to maximize this obviously also for you guys so it's not really abusing in, in any kind. I really want to make sure that this is quality content for you guys and I feel um, making the commentary for this video, it, it changed actually. In the past I, I was always feeling a bit... I don't know, I need to do the commentary now, I don't really know what to say, but in the meantime it really got something special for me because I can really express my thoughts that went into it. 
uh, even better than in a live stream because in a live stream we talk about so many different things like for example what she said and uh, <laughs> this is why it's always good to come back uh, to, to making an actual time-lapse video where I have a little bit more freedom in talking about whatever I want to talk about but also mainly about what we are building in the time-lapse. So here goes, uh, we need to talk about what I'm doing right now. So again, see that I have placed a little bit of a, um, yeah, it's not really a roof, it's just a little bit of a uh, wider opened uh, element with a little bit of a, a roofing on top of the uh, small boat, like kind of taxi drive part of the lock flume. And uh, I wanted to make sure that this is uh, somewhat themed, but not too crazily themed because Honestly, this, this building itself, the lock room, gives me most of the struggle because I'm not entirely sure in which kind of direction I want to bring this in terms of style. Uh, mainly because of the reason, uh, like because of the fact that this is somewhere in between time-wise. It's, it's, it's obviously in the old part of the park, but it's not as old as the wooden coaster, for example. It's not really directly located in the botanical garden, so it is more or less in a newer part of the old part, if that makes sense, if you can follow me. Um, and at the same time, it's also not that much, you know, it's not so likely that this has been always um, a nature inspired area. So my main idea was that this area could have been potentially some kind of a storage warehouse area. So where maybe all the all the um, products that have been uh, created on this island and grown and you know um, that they basically um, have found their storage over here and uh, this could have been the old warehouse then turned into a lock flume area and this is also why I then decided to go for a lot of these concrete textures on the ground by using uh, the gigantic billboards again uh, with the very very nice and still uh, up-to-date concrete textures we initially used on uh, Kuali Beach. This is where I used this. I, it was just after the billboards were implemented into the game and I tested myself in, in doing some crazy stuff with them and I ended up finding and, and feeling that the best thing ever with the billboards is like huge patterns of uh, ground textures um, because it really like the billboards, if you use the non-lit ones, they uh, have basically the same shading and the, the one downside about these things is that they don't have a bump map uh, to them, so you can't really use them so nicely for walls, because uh, obviously because of a wall and you have a bit more of a shading going on, like if the light comes down, um, every depth information starts to really be annoying if it is not in existence. So as long as you use the billboards as a ground path, uh, or pattern, it's not that it's not that big of an issue if you have no bump map in here because then you would need to move in certain angles to kind of feel if it's flat or not. But with a vertical piece, given a wall or a semi-vertical piece like a retaining wall or whatnot, um, it starts really to be a bit annoying because then you're losing the depth information since you don't have a bump map or a normal map and at the same time if you put other pieces around that do have this information it kind of feels off so this is also why i loved that um I found out that usable as a bottom part, they are definitely usable as a bottom texture, but not much more. And this is also the reason why I use them all over the place here. Maybe I'm going to exchange the um, concrete texture to the end of this, epi uh, this, this whole series a little bit to make sure that it does not look too repetitive. But talking about repetitiveness, um, I was putting in some custom supports here because I felt like the whole structure here was very un under supported and this is why I put this in. However, that's already about the end of this episode. I found this was a good place to really stop it. Uh, we are starting to tackle a little bit more about the lock flume now, but so the next episode will be mainly about the lock flume building and styling itself. I'm, I'm, I try to go in and finish it off for the next episode, so the next episode might be a bit longer, um, but then hopefully we will be able to finish it off. However, have a good time and see you next time. Bye guys.
Ah well, and here I am again. I need to just uh, drop some more words on the end screen at the moment. I still haven't had time to change it to the new one. Um, the subs and members are not entirely correct right now. There are a lot more people supporting me now on Twitch. I'll be changing this in uh, the future, very soon to today. Uh, hopefully it will be in a few weeks time in here. So don't worry, I'll be working on it. And now, if you enjoyed today's episode, Consider giving it a like, and if you're new here and you enjoy the content, you want to see more of it, hit subscribe, now very in the middle of the screen, and then we see each other next time. Bye!